Hey everyone, and welcome to the third episode in the Cold War for Beginners series. Today, we're going to look at some gameplay, but before we jump into that, there are a few things to sort out before the game starts. The key to being an effective player is knowing what to do with all of the information that is presented to you, and knowing how to get as much information about the battle as you possibly can before it starts. So first up, before the battle's even begun, you have several things you can do to better understand how the game might play out. The first thing I recommend you do is switch to the minimap instead of the compass. The compass provides you with a very blinkered view of the battlefield. You will know exactly what is happening around you, but you will not know anything about what is happening beyond that. Knowing exactly what is happening everywhere means that you can make better decisions on what you should or shouldn't do next. Next up, check the team listings. You need to know what you're up against. This can affect everything from your playstyle all the way through to the choices of ammunition you choose to fire and when. Now that we're ready for the game, let's take a look at some gameplay. So here we are on Fredvang. We're in the southwest spawn and I am on the left side of the spawn cluster is what I'll call it. That means that my easiest route to assist the team on a flank is to go left. Now if I was on the right side, it would be easier for me to go right. So where you spawn and you know the distance you have to travel is something that does matter because you don't want to be arriving late to a battle because that can be downside for you and it's a downside for your team. Based on where I've spawned then, I am heading towards the high ground in the middle of the map. Now like is in any other fight, high ground is important. If you can gain the high ground, you have the advantage. So I'm heading straight towards the middle of the map where we have this cluster of rocks just ahead of me right now that I can use as cover. Keeping an eye on the minimap is something that you do need to do as often as possible. If you know where you're heading, look at the minimap to find out what's going on around you. There is another hill to my right, and when you drive to this location you do have to be careful because just like that, you can get shot in the side from the other hill. Now at this point, what I've just done there is another little trick that I suggest new players learn as soon as possible. You may have heard a slight squeaky noise, <laughs> I'll call it, a slight squeaky noise just before I pulled the trigger on that light tank. And what I did was I activated auto lock, which means the gun will automatically lock to a target so that all I need to do is concentrate on driving the tank. The gun will always lock to the center of mass of a target. And I used that trick or that mechanic within the game, I should say, to get that kill on that light tank without having to aim down the sight. Now to auto lock, you press the right bump on your controller and that is the activation for auto lock when you have your reticle pre-aimed at a target. Right then, we've got an E3 coming up, we've got shots flying in from across the side, from straight ahead of me, sorry, and that E3 went for a dive. That's useful because he's lost 600 and something hit points. The shots from my right are missing, which is fortunate. I get myself into this cover here, and this is a moment where I'm getting myself into a position, but the position I take is largely dependent on what I can see from the minimap. I've got cover all around me, and here is another trick that you, I think is worthwhile learning. Keep yourself to cover. I can take these shots without exposing the entirety of my tank. All I'm doing is peaking the ridge just enough so that my gun can see the target. Didn't quite get that right there, and as you can see the Centurion 2 put a shot back into me, but right now I'm taking cover while reloading, pulling out to take the shot, pulling back into cover so that I can reload. This is very, very important. If you do not need to expose yourself, don't, basically. It's as simple as that. You want to save your hit points as much as possible. And you can do that by taking cover as much as, as, as is necessary. Now we're keeping hold of the high ground here. My team is pushing down on the north side. My team is holding position on the south. 
Very little spotted on the mini-map now, so I'm pushing forward to press home the advantage that we've got in the north side, on the north side of the map here. This E3 is distracted, which again is an ideal situation to be in. If the enemy is not shooting at you, or they have something else to look at, that's great, because that means they're not pulling the trigger and taking your hit points. E3 is dead. Now I'm repositioning because I've joined my team on the north side of the map here and I can see from the mini-map that there are three targets to my left and that is how, that's an example of how the mini-map is more advantageous than the uh, the compass if I didn't have the mini-map I wouldn't be able to see as far out to know that these tanks are here the mini-map also meant that I could see these tanks were retreating not just based on looking at them with the uh, with 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 my uh, third person camera view here, I can look at the mini map and I can see that their 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 indicators are moving back. So I know they're retreating, which gives me the opportunity to push forward. Now at this point, I am aware that the T55A is a premium, so it's it's better than the the, the M46. But once again, this guy is distracted. I was hesitant to push forward at first, but now I take aim at the lower plate and my shot goes straight through. The team's got this game now. I'm pretty confident. I'm not going <laughs> to... For a second I thought I could uh, peak that ridge line, but no, I can't. So back down the hill we go, and we are going to take out, or we're going to assist the team with taking out this T-44. And this poor guy, bless him, I think he's had the... Uh, I don't know, the, the end game we're losing, uh, to hell with it. <laughs> yeah, that guy had never had a chance. There were three of us shooting at him, and he's gone. Take aim at the last target, pull trigger, and we get the last kill. And there we go. 4,285 damage in the M46. That's a good example of how the M46 can be played, and we get MVP. Moving on to the last screen then, good XP, good damage, best in game for direct hits and best in game for kills, 174,000 silver and that's without boosts so that gives you an idea of the, of the level of silver that can be earned in Cold War, just quickly checking the damage stats there but back to the end game screen and there you go. Alright guys, that is all I have for this one, that is my breakdown of some M46 gameplay. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, if not a dislike. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and as always, hope you're all keeping well, and I will see you out there.